<laughs> What's up guys? We're live and uh, this idea is kind of something that we collaborated with the two of us because mm -hmm. there's two people here. I'm here again. Yeah. Um, Welcome back. <laughs> so a lot of people have more free time in this season um, yeah. and I hope that uh, anime is a part of that. Yeah, because, you know, what better time to catch up on your shows is when you're forced to stay in your home. So, uh, we got five shows each, so ten shows total, that are shows that you can catch up on. And we tried to pick shows that, you know, aren't overly popular or, like, ne not necessarily our favorites, but just shows that we really appreciated that we didn't necessarily feel like were that talked about or maybe just forgot, you know. So, yeah, so maybe you've started the show but you never finished it, or maybe you've just never heard of it. So before you click off the video, please comment your five shows that you want us to see or ones that have been impactful to your life that you think are either underrated or just don't get a lot of credit or news. Yes, because we're always up for watching new shows as well. Uh, so the first one here, uh, mine, uh, they're all, uh, three of them are, are rom-coms, kind of. I'd say two and a half are rom-coms, and then you have some action shows. So I'm sure list? Josh uh, brought more action than I did. Maybe. But, um... So the first one is Origairu is kind of like the Don Machi name, mm. and the English name would be my teen, uh, my teen Romance Comedy, or My Teen Romance Comedy Snafu. Uh, this one's pretty cool. It, it's the your name. standard, in some ways, slice of life, but the main character has, like, um, has problems expressing his emotions in a way that a normal teenager would. Mm. So it's him, so like, not awkward. caring... I don't know. <laughs> or just like a like 90-year-old man inside a teenager pretty much. So it's him like learning to care about like clubs and things and it's like a group of misfits basically. Mm. Similar to Breakfast Club the movie, but not at all. Ah, Breakfast anyway, Club the anime. That gotcha, is a, that gotcha. is a good one. <laughs> but yeah, so this is a good show. I think uh, the third season comes out fairly quickly, so if you haven't watched now's the time. Hmm. I may convert Josh to watch this show. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'll check out anything. Uh, I guess the first on my list, we can go back and forth, I guess. Um, this one's actually a really old one, but I just don't think I've heard many people talk about it or just mention it as like a, a classic. But I really do think it is like one of the gems of the time. It came out in like the early 2000s, I think. And that is uh, Phantom Requiem of the Phantom. And this is actually like one of my favorite shows. But it's just really cool because this one's kind of an action uh, show. But I would say it's more so um, it really talks about the like the philosophy and just like the repercussions of living this life and is there any really way to get out of being an assassin. So it focuses two people that are kind of brainwashed into being an assassin and one of them is supposed to be like the 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 new blood. So the number one assassin is training him and then they're wanting him to like replace her but obviously there's an attachment there so you just kind of go through their whole uh relationship and also them facing everything whether it be missions that they're set out to go do and kill people for or them you know tackling their own problems with life and it's just a really good show and it's one of the saddest shows <laughs> it is seen. it is pretty sad yeah so uh we're gonna try to do this we'll see if it works but i i think a good idea is we'll have the links to like maybe like the summary of the show uh, in yeah, the description. Or I can pop it up on the screen. So you I, know. maybe I already did that. Who we'll, knows? We'll see. But yeah. uh, pop up some art or something. Yeah. But uh, in the description and then maybe a link to, uh, you know, Crunchy or whatever so you can watch the shows. Most of these are pretty fairly available, but not including this one because this one is Chinese anime, uh, which I think a lot of people have ignored or kind of written not off been as hit bad. To. Yeah. Which, a lot of it's bad, to be honest. There's one that's There's, about like yeah. a weird type of Chinese chess that I watched for a while. It's pretty weird. <laughs> but, um, so two shows. Uh, the first one, it's actually had an, a Netflix adaptation, which is pretty good. I should watch more of it, but just mm. haven't had time recently. That's uh, King's Avatar. It's a great one. Uh, I don't remember what the uh, Chinese name is exactly, but you can look it up under King's Avatar. Um, I recommend the anime, although the live action is cool. I think uh, first getting... Uh, a picture of what the anime I like is is helpful, and this one is pretty much like if uh, WoW was a was the competitive esport, and it's like uh, the best way to describe it is he was the best player, but he you know helped people and got in super early and didn't get paid, and then EA yeah, screwed him too. over, and he's trying to start anew. It's basically the new age story of like old school wrestlers. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. basically. Um, and then the other one is Quan Chi Fashi. Now this uh, series. Is very good, uh, magic related. It's got really good world building, 
Uh, monsters taking over the world, magic mm -hmm. humans are trying to fight back. It's also got a little bit of weird elements. You can definitely tell the production value is a little weird at times. Yeah. But overall, like the story and like the characters, I, I, I really like them. They are really And uh, if you go on, you can actually read the books in English. They're fairly uh, translated, fairly uh, update. Well, actually, it's a Russian to English translation, <laughs> but they're, they're fairly translated. Um, you know, I think it's like 2,500 chapters, I think 2,000 and chapters are translated. And uh, it's it's got a really good world building, you know. You basically have like the the Power Olympics, so like you know you have yeah. like Olympic athletes who are eighteen, but it's dude with like magical powers instead of like you know. They shooting, do a really good hoops. job of. I, I think the coolest thing about that show is just how the magic works in the world because obviously magic is a big thing about the world, so it's very powerful. But they do a really good job of having it scale back to where you know there's. a there's things that will make it kind of a handicap for some, or like there's reasons why some characters are super powerful, you know. Uh, yeah, I, and it's not to go into too much detail because this would make the video super long. But, but you know, cool teacher, teacher. yeah, cool teacher. Uh, your turn, number one girl. Your girl. Uh, yeah. So uh, the other one I got on my list. Uh, this is also another one I, I really love, and it didn't come out that long ago, and that is uh, Zombie Land Saga. And this is a show that blew me the way the most, just because. It's not a type of show that I watch or necessarily like, but I think it does something with the genres that just gripped me in a way. Um, and so if you don't know about Zombie Land Saga, it's basically an idol show. But before you <laughs> write me off, uh, it, it's got a twist. So as the name entails uh, Zombie Land, these idols are all dead. And they've been brought back to life. And some of them are from different time periods. And, you know, they are kind of brought back by this manager. He's very mysterious, and there's connections there that you know they kind of allude to. But um, they're kind of going and trying to uh, fundraise some, I guess, uh, money or just exposure for their land so they can kind of get some, uh, you know, more funding and more tourists to come there. Uh, but it's really cool because I think this is one of the few shows, like idol shows, that I've seen where it actually does focus a lot on character development. So each episode in the first season is really kind of letting you get connected to each of the idols kind of shows you, uh them uh overcoming their past life so they can focus on this new life and it's just a really fun and kind of heartwarming show so if you're into that kind of stuff you know and you like zombies i suggest go checking it out it's a really cool parody in that genre uh so another show uh, interview with monster girls i think we've talked about this show yeah. on the channel a little bit maybe so uh but it's yeah a cute show. <laughs> it's, it's a really cute show honestly just look it up i don't want to spend too much long uh, on it but uh basically high school counselor He's interviewing monster girls, so you have like uh, vampires, you have uh, invisible people, you have uh, headless horsemen. Yeah, headless horsemen. <laughs> I was like, I, I don't remember what that's the... called. But yeah, I uh, snow queen women. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. It's really great. And it has uh, a great heart and great character development that you don't expect from a show that's mm. you know about high school. And also uh, mm -hmm. testing the mortal men on their uh, sexual Sucky desires. <laughs> Sucky this is cool as well. Hype uh, for the succubus. For yeah, sure. she definitely should. Best win succubus because she's socially responsible. Yeah, in all the shows. Uh, okay, what's what's your next one? Uh, my next one is a. It's actually a. Ne well, it classifies as Netflix original. I don't know if like Netflix actually made it, or if they're just producing it or whatever. But it's called uh, Ico Incarnation. This is like a sci-fi show, and um, I don't want to give too much away because I think part of the thing that makes it really good is kind of the mystery of it. But basically, there's this thing like a bioweapon, or not necessarily a bioweapon, but it kind of appears to be that, that's broken out and it's absorbing uh, the the country. And so humanity, or at least Japan in this instance, is kind of focused into this one city, and they're having to send out people to try to push back this substance because eventually it's kind of like the blob, so like it'll just absorb everything. Um, and there's kind of a storyline that revolves around this girl and she has connections to the people that um, you know kind of made this so it's kind of focused on a small entourage trying to get her back to because um, to the, like the source of this because that's what will stop it so I'm trying to be very vague because like I said the mystery is a big part of it but if you like sci-fi and you like again maybe something like Ghost in the Shell where it has more of a f philosophical Nah, that's not the word, but philosophical you know what I mean. Yes, philosophical, elements. or you know, just like asking bigger questions. That's that's a show for you. So I'll I'll do my two final ones shortly. Cut kind of short this video a little bit. Okay. So Re Life is my next one. This one is uh, very quickly. 
there's a guy, he's a failure of, his life is a failure at like 30, he's like not doing anything with his life, and the guy's like, hey, you can take this pill uh, for research, we'll give you, you know, $100,000, and you can be a high school student for a year. And then once we collect your data, then, you know, we'll go on from there and, we, and you can go back to your life and have a job for the next 10 years, basically. It's basically the uh, restoration plan. So, yeah, it's real, it's real life, you know. Uh, and it, a really sweet, uh, some romantic elements there, and there's some characters that are really endearable. In, uh, yeah, endearing. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> uh, and then this next one, it's, I'll put the link, because uh, it's in Japanese. It's Showu Jenkuku Jenkoku Rakugo Shinju. I don't know. That's perfect pronunciation. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. But uh, so this one's about a former Yakuza member getting back into the free world after getting released from prison, and he's going on to uh, study and practice a, a new passion of his life, which is a new traditional style of Japanese comedy. Mm-hmm. And it's his like him like entering the world and like remembering his life before crime. Mm-hmm. And Michael knows how to grip me because uh, I love Yakuza stuff. So that's one I'm going to be checking out because I haven't seen that. And I need to finish that one. Yeah. So my last two, um, again, another Netflix one, uh, Disaster's Life of Psyche, if you like. I mean, we talked about that on the channel, so we can link a card there. Y- you'll get more of a premise if you just watch that video, so I won't go into too much detail. But basically, it's about this guy that has psychic powers, and he's basically the most OP man in the world. Uh, and it's just following him doing mundane stuff and just wanting to be alone and trying to avoid people. Um, and it's kind of like a skit show. So, you know, there's a bunch of different stuff that happens and resets, but it's just a really fun time. And if you watch the first season in the dub, I recommend it just because the dub, uh, is great. The dub adds to the hilarity of it's it, uh, even though I am a sub man myself, typically. Uh, but then the last one I'll talk about is one that you and me watched together a long time ago now, uh, but it was Classroom of the Elite. And I really did like that show. It's not one of my favorites. I don't think it's one of the best, but I think it is a really well done show. And it's just kind of cool to sit back and see like kind of evil mind games in the sense that, you know, there's schemes happening, but it's the whole show in a nutshell isn't too evil, you know? I mean, it just has some themes there, but it's uh, basically this guy, he's supposed to be like a government experiment, I think, and he was basically designed or grown up to be like one of the the smartest people in the country, and there's a school that has all these elite people in there, and they have like a point system, and they have to maintain a certain point system in order to stay in the school or to be able to Get a uh, guaranteed good job. Yeah, so um, it's basically the different classmates and the different classes uh, competing against each other for the highest ranking of the of the entire school so um there's a lot of you know academic stuff there's i think there's even some maybe physical ones it's mostly academic uh tests though uh and, and even they though they have a hunger hunger games later on yeah they do and it takes place on a deserted island so that makes it even uh more thrilling uh so definitely not just like in the classroom setting but it's, it's a cool show it may sound that's like one of those that the premise may sound boring but in execution it's probably one of the best like scheming and when the scheme gets revealed you're like oh that makes sense and that's cool yeah yeah so um yeah that's uh that's basically all we got uh between these lists so again like we said you know let us know if you have some for us that you'd like us to check out or just ones that you know you feel like are underappreciated um we will try to put links or just you know show you the cover art so if you want to go searching like you can find it uh but anyway guys i'll conclude this video so stay safe and peace ethics watch anime